This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 3, this is Section 4, Part 1. Defining Sickness as Ordering of Thought, Part 1. David I want to talk about sickness and the whole idea of not focusing attention on symptoms. It is about really trying to maintain constant vigilance about what can be sick and watching the temptation of paying attention to the symptoms. It seems to be easy to slide back into focusing on symptoms. There has been a lot of talk about the temperature in this building. Up and down and so on and so forth. Can we really watch our minds and watch the blah, blah, blah and then withdraw our minds from the blah, blah, blah? Withdraw from all the chatter. Just try to be very, very attentive to the mind all the time. Keep a close watch. Friend, I am concluding that since I still have some passing symptoms, I must not be as clear as I could be about this. What else could it mean? I notice that when I cough, part of me feels like I shouldn't be coughing, that it is setting a bad example. It feels like I am failing to have a clear mind if I am coughing and blowing my nose. David That is good. You have said that you would like to be clear. That is important. I also think there is a tendency to get back into talking about the symptoms when they seem to manifest when you are with others. If you are at the point where you cannot have a miracle, If you cannot seem to have a mind shift to reduce the fear and alleviate the distress, do what you need to do with the magic so as to be as unobtrusive about it as possible. It is important not to give your mind to sharing ideas that cannot be shared. That is where false empathy comes in. Friend, how do you be unobtrusive when you are hacking your head off? David, if you are hacking and hacking and do not seem to be able to get still enough to reduce it with the miracle, or if you have taken magic and are feeling very guilty about what is being exhibited. The most helpful thing would probably be for you to just remove yourself. If you are feeling guilty and self-conscious, you are making an interpretation that is fearful. If you are feeling that you are not teaching what you should be teaching, or however you are interpreting it in your mind, that is a state where the fear is not getting reduced at all. There is no shift. Someone who seems to mean well asks, How are you doing today? Then it snowballs into thoughts of fixing special foods, etc. It just goes on and on. 
it is counter to everything that we have been talking about. That it is lead, lending support to something that cannot be shared. You do not want to give your mind to ideas that do not come from the Father. And yet there is temptation to just go right along and do it anyway. It has to get very clear that this must be an either-or thing. It cannot be something that you talk about and give lip service to and then turn around and slide into. So it may be helpful in those situations to just remove yourself. Friend, isn't there a way to be in that situation of coughing and not be fearful? I mean, isn't there a different way of having the same externals yet having a different mindset about it? David, yes. That is the miracle. There has to be a total shift in perception for there to be an ease and a comfort about that. Friend, is there no other choice when hacking than to leave? David, a miracle. Friend, okay, the miracle. But if I am not accepting the miracle then there is no other choice than to remove myself? David, you are saying you are interpreting yourself as being uncomfortable. You are feeling guilty or ashamed. Is that helpful? Do you find that interpretation helpful? Friend, I do not think leaving is necessarily a solution if I still feel guilty. I could stay or leave, but it is the guilt that is the issue. It is the interpretation that I am making that is the issue, not staying or leaving. David, if the mind is too fearful of the miracle, then a mixture of magic and miracle is recommended, which could be taking medica medication or it could be getting up and leaving. The magic is anything external, doing something on the outside to try to bring about some sort of relief, Moving a body in or out of the room is a kind of magic as well. As you said, the guilt comes from the interpretation of the system, symptoms. But what we are trying to get to is the idea that the body cannot be sick. A body being sick is the same as a pencil or a shoe being sick. The mind is the thing that can be sick. The wrong mind is sick. A learning device cannot be sick. The guilt is coming from the interpretation that is being given to what seems to be happening on the screen. And pain, for example is great evidence for the separation being real. The ego interprets pain as punitive. It proves that you are small, frail, weak and vulnerable. It proves the body has power over the mind because obviously the body is telling you how to feel. That is why we have to get to the question of purpose. You want to get to the idea of seeing how it is that you look upon the body and what you are using the body for. How do I use the body? How do I see the body? Do I just see it as insignificant? 
and completely apart from me? Just a learning device? Or are there ways in which it still seems very important to me? It is really important to look into that. And you can take it to the broader realm of looking at your whole life through the lens of purpose. We can use the vehicle of talking about sickness to go in as deeply as we can. Let's try to get clear on this. To see a chair as a chair is sick. To see a clock as a clock is sick. In the ultimate sense, to see anything as if it has a separate existence in and apart from everything else is sick. It is a sick interpretation. You see how different that is than the world's way of seeing a body as sick? Yes, a chair is a chair, a clock is a clock, and a sick person is a sick person because they have symptoms that let us know that they are sick. It is the mind that is breaking the world up into little boxes and categories. That is where the sickness lies. That is what we have to see. Rather than reading meaning into particular symptoms and thinking that some bodies are sicker than others or that cancer is much more serious than the flu or a hangnail. There are all these different categories but it goes much, much deeper than that. We have to go back to the self-concept. The mind believes it is guilty and it is so determined to hang on to that concept that sickness seems like a very small price to pay. If sickness is a witness that the body can tell the mind how to feel, it is also witness that the smallness, the puniness and the vulnerability must be true. We conclude with part two of this section in the next episode.